Hello, church. That was good. Zero, zero, and I'm up here. I made it, right? It's good to see everybody as we come into worship today to worship and celebrate, and I don't know what's happening. I'm going to go over to my own little... It's you. It was, it was Brian. It was Brian. Okay. All right. Welcome to church. Uh, to just a few announcements that I want to share with you. I want to remind you that on October 30th, we are having a all-church worship and fellowship. And so that means that Sunday school will be at 9 a.m., worship will be at 10 a.m., and fellowship meal down in the fellowship hall will be at 11 a.m., where our, our chow team is going to make us a wonderful meal. And so it's an opportunity for us to come together as one church and basically do this. <gasps> you go to my church? I never knew that. And so have that opportunity to go, hey, friend, we all belong to FUMC. It's nice to see you. Whether you're a 9 o'clock worshiper or an 11 o'clock worshiper, bringing it together. And also on that day, the bell choir will be playing. Raise your hand if you're going to play in the bells. All right, there's a couple of you playing in the bells. On October 25th at 5.30 p.m. and October 29th at 9 a.m., there's going to be a practice so that we can play the bells together good right up there. And so I'm really looking forward to it. Also, we are doing a hats and coats for kids and scarves. And Karina made this, so I'm wearing it today. Uh, if you look up here, we have some of the uh, gifts of hats and gloves and scarves that have been brought to us. We're up, up here on the altar so that they can be blessed before we send them off. And so you have until October 21st. Uh, if you're making them right here, see right up here, Karina is just working away to make some hats and some scarves for us to share with our community before the first snow comes. That's what we're hoping, right? So... No snow. Halloween candy is needed. The office is collecting Halloween candy for the downtown trick-or-treat that will be held on October 27th. If you would like to help by either donating candy or the funds to purchase candy, uh, just let us know. You can drop either at the office. Uh, we look forward to receiving that. I will say that I think over the past couple of years, we've had about 800 trick-or-treaters come uh, through the community trick-or-treat. That's a lot of trick-or-treaters, so that means a lot of candy. So if you can bring candy, bring it. Are we ready to worship? I want to invite the acolytes to ready themselves as the praise band is geared up to sing some beautiful music and praises to God today. So friends, take a deep breath. Let it out. And let's get ready to worship. <clears throat> I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness from the cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. The miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony of death and life The grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony, yeah, oh, oh, oh. yeah, oh, 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 come together, sons and daughters, by his blood and wash in water, sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father, our God, what he started. Our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. This grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Oh, 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 yeah. 
church how's everybody doing today Woo. all right we're getting there it's early we're gonna wake you up a little bit this is graves into gardens and I searched the world but he couldn't feel me in man's empty place and treasures and faith I never enough when you came along You put me back together And every desire is now satisfied Here in your love Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing 
This one's called <laughs> Build My Life.
You may be seated. be deceived. I am not Wendy. I know I look nothing like her. So, um, If you wouldn't mind joining me in prayer. Heavenly God, thank you. It's really hard sometimes to Describe just how grateful we are to you, Lord. A thousand songs and a thousand praises would fall short to your glory. Yet we continuously sing, thank you, Lord, for what you give to us. At this time, Lord, I want to say thank you for the ways that you let us serve, the opportunities that you give us. I want to say thank you for the people that you put in our lives. I pray for the guests at the Kairos Prison Ministry, um, Lord, that you be with them and you show them that mercy and that grace that we're so grateful and can say thank you over and over again for and show them your love just as you've shown us. We reach out for those who are suffering right now in either mental health or um, any physical ailments. And we pray that you will also show them the kindness that you have shown us and that we're grateful to you for. Lord, I pray that your word will just pour down like rain on us so that we can just see your majesty. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you do for us. Thank you for your never-ending love, for your love that just showers us even when we don't always deserve it or don't feel like we could earn it. In your name we pray. Amen. Mm.
Good morning. Our scripture this morning comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. For his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. Through these, he has granted uh, to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world on account of lust. Now, for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they do not make you useless, nor unproductive in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning again, church. Good to see you. I'm going to move. I'm going to move. Actually, I'm going to come down. Let's come down. It looks so good this morning. Eddie, could you follow me? Did I hide from you? Good. So I love this scripture. I don't know if you guys know, but um, I say that a lot. I say it so much that uh, Stephanie in the office made me a t-shirt that had a big heart on it that has all the scripture, scriptures she remembers me saying that I love. There's actually a scripture on it that says John 17, and in parentheses, yes, the whole chapter. But I do love this scripture, and I want to tell you why. It's because this scripture has that ability to tell us that we have this firm foundation. Praise band sang this beautiful song, right? What, what are we building on? And it's a firm foundation of the love of Jesus. And this scripture kind of speaks that to us. In verse 3 it says, His divine power has given us everything needed for a life of godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by his own glory and excellence. So what that tells me is that God, in his abundance of wisdom, says that we can do greater things. Remember last month's sermon series? That we can do greater things. That we can be saints, that we can also partake in the divine nature. That's a lot for us to think about. As humans, we're like, oh, no, man, sorry, I'm too flawed. There's no way that I could be a saint There's no way that I can be a part of the sacred, the divine of what's going on. But I want to challenge you to this because this word speaks to us about being in that participation of the divine. Now we're starting a worship series um, that um, I kind of fell in love with this uh, book that I'm reading by Henry Nouwen. I don't know if anybody knows Henry Nouwen. Henry Nouwen is one of uh, our modern-day theologians. He died in the 19, uh, 1996, I believe, is when he died. But he uh, was a theologian of our time, not somebody from 200 years ago, not somebody from 500 years ago, not somebody from 1,000. You get it? He was in our time, even though he died some 25 years ago. But his writings speak to all denominations, speak to all persuasions of walk, speak to all political sides. Uh, He had that ability to touch people with the way that he wrote things. And he has this book series uh, called The Art of Living. And I thought, you know what? That's kind of a cool worship series. What if we were to think about ourselves artful in our faith, created in the perfect image of God, created so beautifully created in his likeness and in his wisdom that we are artfully created, beautifully and wonderfully made. And so uh, today I want to talk about how we might discover the divine. What does that word divine mean? 
It really means, it's, I think it's an adjective, and if, does anybody know what an adjective is, you school teachers? What is an adjective? It describes a noun. So me, let's describe me. What if I were to say I was divine? That means that I would be leaning into the likeness of a deity that I'm following. That's the Merriam-Webster basic, okay, it's really my synopsis of what Merriam-Webster says about what it means to be divine. But being divine and leaning into the partaking in the participation of the divine nature of God shown to us through Jesus Christ allows us to step in those spaces that are more sacred. That we are the people of God who need to be. Now, the sacredness isn't that place where we go and we're just kind of close ourselves up and kind of a, you know, the nunnery or the abbey or, you know, we go and, and, and we uh, go out into the wilderness 40 days. It's not really that. It's about learning to live our lives artfully in the likeness of what God has already shown us, that firm foundation. His divine power has given us everything that we need, everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. And so he comes down, Peter writes this, he says, Thus he has given us, through these things, his precious and very great promises. Hey, those promises are ours. For us to hold on to, for us to carry, for us to trust by faith through the grace of God, that the promises of God are ours to live out today. So that through them we may escape the corruption of this world because of lust. And when it says this, friends, we know that there's a lot of things that we can lust in this world, material things. We can chase after a lot of things. But what, what Peter is writing here is he's trying to say, hey, listen, man, you have this firm foundation. How about building on that foundation that has already been built for you, the sacred and the holy and the goodness? For this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with excellence. See, Scripture tells us to step into the greater things, to step into the sacred, to step into the divine, so that we might be able to support our faith with excellence. We must make every effort to do that. And excellence, we follow that with knowledge. And knowledge, we follow that with self-control. And self-control, we follow that with endurance. Sometimes that word actually is perseverance. And with endurance, with godliness. We're building our foundation, the knowledge that God wants us to have that we might partake in a life of the divine. The adjective. Describing me, describing you, describing what it is that we're doing. Knowledge and self-control and godliness and mutual affection and mutual affection with love. And verse 8 I think is very important for us to, to take this verse and look at it. It says, for if... If these qualities, these qualities that we just talked about, knowledge and wisdom, self-control and perseverance, endurance and godliness, and loving one another, loving our neighbor, if these qualities are yours, take hold of them, friend. If they are yours and are increasing among you, they keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kind of sounds like the fruit of the spirits, right? Fruit of the spirits is held up, love and self-control, and all these beautiful things in the middle of it, these emotions that we live out, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. As Paul writes that in Galatians 5, he says, without these things, that these things there, are, there is no law against things, that we can live these out that we can be fruitful with our lives. And so when we take this and we say, well, what does it mean for me today to discover the divine and to be a part of that that sacred space making? John and I went to England a few years ago and we went on the Wesley pilgrimage. When I graduated from seminary, my uncle called and he says, I want to send you and John on a trip. You've done a magnificent thing. I want to send you to Hawaii. I want to send you somewhere magnificent. Where would you like to go? And I said, I want to go on the Wesley pilgrimage. My uncle scratched his head and he goes, okay, why? I've just done something so incredible and I'm working towards ordination and I just want to be bathed in what that means to be a Methodist walking in the Wesleyan way, walking in the grace of 
God. I just want to, I just want to just pour it in me and live it out. And so when we did that, we got these little pilgrim books. It's way up there, but we, nope, it's right here. We got our little pilgrim books and we went with 41 other United Methodists across the globe. And then we made friends with, with uh, DSs and pastors from Africa. We met people from the Philippines that journeyed this pilgrim walk with us. And really this was about us attaching ourselves to the Wesleyan way of grace. And about halfway through this book, there is what you see on the screen, this cross. It's called the Jerusalem Cross. And when I read this scripture in 2 Peter chapter 1, and I think about partaking in the divine nature of all that God is showing us and building on this foundation of the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God and the grace of God that helps me to walk towards the virtuous life that he has laid out for me, I think about this cross. Up at the top it says... That this, this life that we live today in the virtuous ways of Christ is to witness to Jesus Christ, to be a witness for Jesus Christ in the world and to follow his teachings through acts of compassion, through acts of justice, through worship and devotion under the guidance of the Spirit. And we looked in this book and we saw that. We began to visit Methodist churches across England. And on the, on the windows of uh, coming in the doors of the church, we have the cross and flame. But many churches in England, they have this cross. And I think this is a cross that describes our life in Christ. And it flows right along with the John Wesley's teaching on the means of grace, those, those ordinary things in our everyday life that show up as the grace of God. And in this cross, I want to walk through this with you. This cross gives us the opportunity to recognize that we have a vertical relationship with God and Jesus. So we have our works of piety and we have our works of mercy that connect us to a very loving and grace-filled God. But we also have this horizontal movement that comes through this cross that talks about our acts of compassion. It talks about our acts of, ju of justice and our acts of devotion and our acts of worship that can be both personal and public. And so every single one of us, as we walk into the virtues of our faith, taking on and carrying with us the grace of God, we have an individual relationship and we have a very public relationship. This is the way that it's been designed, right? Right? Personally, we find those, uh, those acts of piety. You guys know what piety means? Piety, the word piety. It very simply means practicing our faith. It's leaning into uh, an act of worship, an act of being religious. Just like uh, teachers practice their teaching, lawyers practice their vocation, doctors practice being doctors. We who follow Jesus, we are to be practicing our faith so that we can be very artful about the way that we live it out. And so we have this individual relationship with God that has our works of piety. What are works of piety? Well, it's our personal study, our readings of devotion, our prayer time, our fasting, if we're good enough to have those moments in our life where we fast, just to have those moments where we empty ourselves enough to be filled with the divine nature of God. And so we have the corporate, we individually do that, and when we authentically get really good at individually pouring our life into a life of piety, it becomes communal, it becomes public, that we worship together. That's what we're doing right now. We sing praise songs together. We've experienced that already this morning. We witness the opportunity to come to prayer and reflect and to light a candle. These are the things that grow us communally as the people of God. And so we're working on those works of piety. And as we work on them individually, and then we authentically move into that opportunity to be filled with grace so much it begins to pour out of us, that we have a public works of piety, corporate worship. Now what is this for? This is for training us up, helping us to be better practicers of our faith that we can live into the works of mercy. 
And with the works of mercy, we have also our personal works of mercy and our very public works of mercy. Now, what might be the personal works of mercy that we do? It's when we as an individual decide that we're going to go care for somebody that might need help. It might be when we go, as John Wesley would say, visiting, visiting those that are in prison or visiting those who are sick. It might be me on a random Friday afternoon saying, I'm going to go over to the ministry center and see what's happening over there, that I might be able to help someone. Having that opportunity for personal growth inside of my life, and then when when I get really good at it and I'm meeting other people who are getting really good at it, we have what we call the public works of mercy. Now what is the public work of mercy? Public work of mercy is when we as a body recognize the need to bring more justice into our world, to come together to stop oppression, to come together and to do what is right. As John Wesley was very fond of saying, we do all the good that we can do. We do no harm. And we stay in love with God. And we do that together as the body of Christ. This is us pouring into the virtuous part of our lives, living out already the divine power that has given everything needed, as the scripture says, everything needed for a life of godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us that we might be partakers of the divine nature, that we might receive the opportunity to say, I want more of Jesus in me. And so I think that's really where we are as a church body and movement in the United Methodist Church with all that's going on on the uh, global conversation. That friends, we come together, we, we practice individually, but at some point, we need to come together as the whole body of church and say, who are we and where are we headed? What can we do to the power of two, to the power of four, to the power of eight, to the power of 16? I'm trying to do math, right? The power that grows because we come together as the body of Christ, understanding foundation that we build upon, build upon, build upon. That because of the knowledge that we have of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, you're like, oh, well, I don't understand the no what knowledge do I have of that. Man, you know that Jesus came into this world. The light of the world came in and gave us life and life eternal. He went to the cross for us that we might be forgiven and free, that we might be set free of our sin life and turn into a right direction and receive the redemption that we need in our life so that we might turn and go and do something powerful in his name. That is the knowledge that we carry with us right now and that we build on that with excellence and we build on that with self-control and we build on that with perseverance means that we're fighting for our faith, that we believe it in such a way that we are persevering even through the darkest days. We're persevering because the light of Christ has shown up in us. And then we come together as a group and we experience godliness together. And we come together as a group and we experience godliness and brotherly love, mutual affection, and we come together and we live out that love knowing that we have a vertical relationship with God through Jesus Christ, who in his likeness we have been created artfully to do and to be the hands and feet. And that's not a cliche that we just throw out, friends. If we're living out the adjective of the divine nature, we are participating, pouring in. And so I think in some of the pews, I hope they replace them. Are there little index cards in the pews? Or did they all go... If, if, if you can grab an index card, here's what I want you to do as we leave this place today, friends. I want you to write at the top of the card. There might be some behind you if you don't see one in front of you. Or if you've got a notepad or something to write on. I want us to think about how we, individually and how we, publicly, communally can work together to experience the divine nature and build on the foundation that is already present before us and ask ourselves, how can I draw nearer to God? 
What does that look like? And so if you want to write down a sentence basically that says something like, um, how, how would I word this without it getting too wordy? <laughs> I want to draw nearer to God. What do I need to do in order to draw nearer to God? Or maybe you want to write it like this. What do I need to do to put more spark, spunk into my faith life? What do I need to let go of? These are a lot of questions, friends. I'm just throwing out some ideas. What do I need to let go of so I can make more room for the divine nature to show up inside of my life? What does it look like for us as a church to have the nature of our deity, of our God that we worship? That we can live out the grace, that we can pour that grace into others, that we can strengthen them. I want to tell you, man, that's happened right here today because I'm wearing, this is not a stole, but this was made by a friend of mine, right? The gift that Karina has to create because she's artful (laughs) that she's living a life and giving herself to a very loving God who has given himself to her time and time again that she's sharing that gift it's so simple as as Karina putting together this scarf and me saying that's really cool can I wear it when I go up and suddenly find out that she's gifted it to me right that I can wear it and it can be mine and every time I put it on I can say hey thank you God for showing me Karina thank you for the life that she's living for you that God calls us to have more sacred conversations like that we don't just ask standing in the line of the grocery store what's the most popular thing we say to one another It's getting cold outside. We talk about surface things, right? Wesleyans who live a life of grace, building on the foundation that God has laid out before us, friends, we need to start having Christian conversations. Conversations that look more like, how are you really doing? How is it with your soul? What's going on in your life that I might be able to pray into or walk with you? To be part of what we're doing together. To encourage one another and to lift one another up. This is a very active cross, but friends, I love it because the little crosses in between are us living out our faith. Living out the divine nature and partaking in it, saying, you know, God said that I can be a saint. God said that I can live out the divinity of who he is. Maybe writing it on an index card of how I might even begin that. To trust by faith that God has called you to this space to live deeper into the sacred. What might we need to take up or lay down that we might be able to participate fully in the divine nature of the Holy One. It's something that we're going to ponder over the next few weeks. I hope that you ponder it with me. But as you journey, carry that grace with you in the places that you go and trust in the foundation of a very good God who just reaches into your heart and says, thank you for the people you put around me. Thank for you. Thank you for the gift of relationship. Thank you for the free hugs that happen all the time up in the balcony. Thank you for the team that says, I want to pour into this church by doing sound. These sound like little things, but these are the things that bring us together corporately so that we can do worship together and say, Lord, we love you because you first love us. Might we get to that point where we want to praise God with every fiber of our being? We give it all to Jesus. And we thank you, God. Amen. That was warm.
Right. I want to say a little bit about why, why I love this song. So imagine you're trying to do something personal. We had things from public to personal on that cross. I thought that was an amazing image. Imagine you go out today and do something for yourself personal, like wash your car. And it's a beautiful day. It's not going to rain. What's the worst thing that could happen if you wash your car? Do you know where I'm going with this? What could happen to a nice, clean, washed car outside? Well, my goodness, no, it's parked. No, we're not going to interfere with it, but that would be rough. Birds! Birds, this next song. Sparrows and lilies. Birds. So there's this part of this song that I want you to know why I love it so much. It's the interlude where we go, do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Brian's way. From now on, I want you to think about this song with me like that because there's a little doo doo in our lives every week. But it's going to be okay. It's all going to be all right. Welcome to church. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we let him be in charge? <laughs> your head down Sister, don't you know Ain't no rest in worry Troubles come Troubles go I have seen the sparrow I have watched her fly No, she does not worry Tell me why should I So hold on The things are gonna get come forward. I was trying to think of something clever to say. I thought Brian was going to start preaching. <laughs> but he's right, you know, things, things are going to get better when we recognize that we have the opportunity to build on to the foundation that Jesus has shown us, that we have that vertical relationship. God has shown us Jesus Christ. And because of that vertical relationship, personal, private, or public, communal, we're able to reach out into the world and we're able to go and to be Christ wherever we go. Wherever we are. That we follow the light of Christ. <laughs> it's good. You're good. It's all perfect. Because it gives us the recognition that the light of Christ 
has been lit the entire time that we're in worship together and we get to follow you out, the light of Christ in us. What does that mean to carry the light of Christ with us wherever we go and the hope that it brings us, the grace of God? Go out into the world, love one another, build on the foundation in the grace and the beauty of it all. Amen? Amen. You guys can go. Lost your way, lost your cool, then you straight up lost your mind. Tried so hard to stay ahead, but you keep falling behind. Life is gonna 